Hello and welcome to Megawatt News, I'm Katie Scott. We've battled through wind and rain to bring you today's news and in the headlines, Microsoft cuts the Xbox 360 prices, Pioneer quits the plasma screen TV market, Apple opens the iPhone to developers and games as well as GPS applications are promised already and last up, the Beatles take a bite of the apple. Microsoft has cut the cost of the Xbox 360 in Europe. Official estimated retail prices now start from $159.99 for the arcade console. This is a £40 saving, which is the same as you'll get off the Xbox 360 Elite, which comes with a 120GB hard drive and is now priced £259.99. And the standard model is now just a penny under £200, and it includes a 20GB hard drive and one wireless controller. The price changes come in on Friday. Pioneer is going to stop making Kuro Plasma TVs. The announcement came after the company admitted losses of around £70 million for the last year. Pioneer will still sell Kuro Plasma TVs and they will continue to use their own technology, but the actual panels will be made by somebody else. Pioneer has already made a deal with Sharp, who will provide it with LCD TVs that will sell under the Kuro brand name from this autumn. As to what will happen to the Project Kuro super thin display and the absolute black model unveiled to the world earlier this year, who knows, but this latest announcement doesn't bode well. The long-awaited iPhone software developers kit was unveiled late last week while the Megawatt team was wandering around in a park pondering the week's news. The kit gives third-party developers the same tools that Apple's own staff use to develop iPhone applications, and its availability is no doubt going to start an avalanche of new applications. Developers will be able to test their applications on a Mac to see how they perform using an iPhone simulator that runs on OS X. Apple will charge developers 99 bucks to publish applications and take a further 30% of the revenue. However, Apple has said there will be no charge for applications that are offered for free to end users. Applications will be available to download direct from the iPhone via a new store Apple is calling the App Store, and this will happen from the summer. As expected, the developer's kit has a definite slant towards gaming. In recent weeks, Apple has made its intentions clear to turn the iPhone into a device to rival handheld consoles from the likes of Sony and Nintendo, and it now has a whole host of game developers working to make this happen. As well as independent developers, some of the big guns are expected to get involved. Apple has already been in touch with gaming giant EA and gave it a fortnight to come up with something. The result is Spore, while rival Sega is now showing off its own iPhone offering, Super Monkey Ball. Mobile phone gaming pro Gameloft, who already produces games for the iPod, has said it will develop over 15 mobile games for the iPhone this year, though no hints as yet to what these may be. But the kit may also see developments in another booming area, GPS. At CBIT, we saw Navingo demoing an iPhone running their SatNav software. At the time, the company hinted at a soon-to-be-announced GPS add-on for the iPhone, and we now know this to be the GoMite Loco GPS external module, which is a small black box which will fit on the bottom of the iPhone and will serve as a web server with an integrated GPS receiver. The black box will be available in the summer for as, as yet unconfirmed price, but GoMite adds you'll only be able to use it on a jailbroken phone. But you won't for a rival system, the Posimotion GFi, which is claiming to be the first GPS system for the iPhone. It comes with a cross-platform software bundle and will work on any computer with a web browser and internet connection. Full specifications and pre-order availability are coming soon, but who knows when. What we think, it may turn up at the same time as the next-gen iPhone, so possibly June, but we'll keep you posted. Last up, if you can't beat them, join them. After one of the biggest court wrangles to date, Apple versus Apple, it seems that the Beatles and Apple Macintosh have decided all they need is love. 
to make a massive amount of money. Paul McCartney has apparently reached a $400 million agreement with iTunes for the distribution of the Beatles' back catalogue. McCartney will share the money with former Beatles drummer Ringo Starr and families of the late Beatles stars George Harrison and John Lennon. Some of the payout will also go to broke pop star Michael Jackson, as well as the EMI and Sony recording groups, who each own certain Beatles recording or publishing rights. Bet Heather Mills is gutted this didn't happen a couple of weeks ago. Those were the biggest stories of the day. Join us again tomorrow, if we haven't been blown away in the meantime, for more news and views from the world of gadgets and technology. Thanks for watching.